Hi, this is Ed from Wright. Today we're going to talk about how our cutter decks are constructed. Now, in our business, a lot of times uh, there, there's bragging rights around how thick the material is that you make a deck from. Uh, but the problem with that is that uh, you don't want your mower just to be heavy. You're building a high performance machine that's going to run for thousands of hours. We want it to be lightweight. Also, there's this cascading effect where the action for a lawnmower is where the blade hits the blade. blade. That's where the mower blade cuts the blade of grass. Everything up from there is enabling activity. So you've got the blade, the spindle, the deck, then you have the engine and the frame and the transmissions and an operator. All the things stack up from there. So the higher performing you have, the pieces that are closer to the blade of grass, the higher performing all the rest of the machine can be. So we don't want the deck to be super heavy. If the deck is super heavy, we have to have a really, really heavy frame to support it. Now we do want our decks to be very stiff. That's what helps the deck last for a long time, maintains good cut. So uh, we're going to go through the deck, how it's built and, and how some of those things all come together. So our main skin is seven gauge with 11 gauge doubler. So you can see here this 11 gauge doubler and anytime we bend the metal it becomes significantly stronger. So the, the crease that is made up by this doubler creates a ton of stiffness right here near where the spindle sits. Now, the other thing that we do is nearly all of our decks have a bridge that goes over the top of the deck. The deck has all kinds of vibration and frequencies that are in there. And when we bridge over it, it creates a ton of stiffness to protect the deck either from impact or from prolonged vibration. So this is really key, uh, especially how we have the floating decks on stand-on mowers. Okay, um, on the nose of the deck, we have several different styles. Uh, this bull nose shape here, it allows us to maintain good clearance in here for cut, cut quality but also keep the caster wheels closer to the deck so the machine can be shorter. And these wheels have a better control over the cut height of the deck than if they were further away. Um, now, like the standard B, the baffles here have almost an identical shape, but the nose goes down this way. And that's because it's our more affordable version. And so, um, you know, we make, it's a more simple design. Um, now on the nose of the deck here, these shapes give the, the nose a lot of, of stiffness and rigidity strength. And commonly you'll see a piece of heavy metal welded on the nose of a deck. And that makes the machine front heavy. So if you're going on a, on a side slope, the machine may want to dive down or something like that. We don't want a lot of weight out on the front of the machine, but we want that strength. So we angle this edge under here. And also this angle means that if, if you make contact with something that's sticking up just a little bit above the lip of the deck, this will bump over it rather than creating a blunt impact uh, because of the angle here. Uh, now, uh, inside the deck, we have uh, these pieces right here. They do add some strength, but they also um, help control our clipping size uh, as grass goes from one chamber to the next. Our baffles that are in here are 11 gauge and they're removable. Um, you know, you, you really don't want, you know, if you hit something and this baffle gets bent, for that to be a welded in part. Uh, whereas if these were damaged for any reason, uh, you could take them out and put another one in. We also uh, take them out when we put the full mulch kit in here. Uh, you could get just a block plate, but if you have the full mulch kit, um, we're able to have a more ideal type mulch kit because we can control the position of this stuff here. And then also on a couple of our deck sizes, we have a baffle, an alternate baffle that brings this, this in closer. Um, so it maybe is not as good for cutting field grass, but if you're uh, maintaining a manicure property, it has a tighter airflow um, and also less flow out if you're, if you're trying to bag things and that kind of stuff. So um, we got options in this area. On, on this side of the deck here, we've got a triangular piece here for reinforcement. And then on the back, we have this little baffle here. And uh, what that does is as the blade is spinning, the grass in this area can have a little bit of confusion. And this splits the flow where this grass is going out and this area is going in and getting cut. Um, and then this tapered surface right here uh, prevents any clump from building up and then dropping under. This creates a continuous flow of anything that comes in contact with that. Uh, so we've got a lot of features here to reinforce it. We've got the backing plate here. Uh, it's welded both to the baffle and the side baffles to reinforce 
Um, this back skirt, this, this can easily get hit. If you come over something that's just, this is lower than the blade. So if you go over something that's just below the height of the blade and this snags, uh, you don't want that to get bent. So uh, this plate back here helps with that. And then on the hip of the deck, we have the piece that the stripe kit is mounted to uh, as well. So there's a lot of uh, features all in here that create a lot of strength and rigidity. Uh, we also have, I think I missed this, we have um, a, a doubler out here. And so if you bump against the edge or wear against things or, or this uh, wears against the ground, maybe when you're going across uh, where a slope meets a driveway or something uh, that has a lot of more, a lot more wear resistance right in this area. So uh, our overall goal here is to build a deck that is very stiff, but lightweight. That helps the deck last longer. It helps the deck also survive impact a lot better. It allows us overall to have a machine that's lighter. It's lighter on the property, can turn faster, uh, if you have a lot of machines on your trailer, it's less fatigue on your truck. Over thousands and thousands of hours, all of these things add up. And uh, it's not always the cheapest way to build something because we've got more welds and seams in here. Um, however, in the long haul, it's the best cost approach to building a solid commercial deck. All right, now let's head over to Weld and we'll show you a couple of features there. All right, now we're in Weld and we're just going to take a uh, up close look at a number of different things. So here you can see the continuous seam welding across the nose, creating a lot of stiffness. Everything's closed off here as well. We have the, the uh, chute flange here. So this chute flange is designed to hold a grass gobbler um, without taking the chute deflector off. So it's pretty beefy in terms of um, being a lot stronger than what was just needed for a chute deflector. Now under here, you can see again, a lot of continuous seam welding. We like to clean out in here uh, real good so that we don't have weld spatter. Anytime there's weld spatter, that's a place where uh, you, when you clean out the deck, your, uh, your knife, your putty knife will get stuck on it. So uh, we, we try to keep that real clean. And it's in, inside our decks, we use mostly carriage head bolts. So again, there's less uh, places for stuff to snag and, um, and start building up grass. Here you can see more of the welding. This doubler is welded in numerous places and there's some spot welds through it, but most of the strength actually comes from the spindles being bolted through it. This particular deck has a tube type bridge structure over it, giving it a rigidity. The spring stops here are welded on. Our idlers um, use a compression spring. The thing about using extension springs for an idler is that there's a lot of vibration in them and the spring hooks can break off an extension spring. So for the most part, or wherever we can, we use um, idlers that have a compression die spring that sits right here on this little uh, point. And then the back here is the stopper for the arm. Coming around the back, again, we can see the piece that's giving reinforcement to the back of the deck so that you know if you hit anything or whatever, this has a ton of strength and rigidity. We tab things in, you know, we're trying to even the stresses out real nicely here. When we tab stuff in like this, it also adds mostly more precision, but also some strength uh, to the how, how the deck is uh, put together. And then around here, you can see the quarter inch uh, doubler uh, giving us more rare resistance in the outside edge. You know, we've had some people say, hey, why don't you put, you know, a rubber bumper or something out here? But what happens is that you really need to always maintain a, a margin between the mower and whatever you're mowing near. So if you put a bumper on here and then you need that margin, now pretty soon your blade is like six inches away from the edge of a house. Where as we keep this clean here and we add some strength in the corner so it doesn't snag on stuff, um, you could get a lot closer uh, and reduce your trimming pretty significantly. Even if you have a bumper that's soft, it'll still bite in and the mower will pivot towards whatever you're hitting. So um, it really comes down to uh, not necessarily protecting things all that much. So we want that clean cut to the last edge going on here. Our uh, wheel brackets are removable, so if you were to hit something blunt, a real solid object blunt, those brackets are made to bend before the deck itself. Um, so overall, that's, that's how the deck is constructed. Uh, again, we want a lot of uh, rigidity, but we don't necessarily want a lot of weight. And so that's uh, a lot of how we, how we um, got to the point where we are with uh, these designs. Hopefully that's helpful to you, and I hope you have a great rest of your season.